Cincinnati, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio. They are two similar places in Southwest Ohio. But also very different. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. How do these two Ohio cities who happen to be fairly close to each other stack up? That's exactly what we're gonna find out in this video. The pros and the cons of living in Dayton versus Cincinnati, Ohio and everything in between. And we are getting into it right now. What's up, it's Victor Fam, Realtor in the Cincinnati metro area. If you wanna know what it's like to live, work, eat, play and chill in Cincinnati in the Cincinnati suburbs, then hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. I'm helping people all the time relocate to Cincinnati or the suburbs around Cincinnati, so feel free to hit me up if you're thinking about buying or selling a house in the Cincy metro area. And remember, when it comes to houses in Cincinnati, you can always call Vic. Okay, so being a native of Cincinnati, I've spent most of my time on the Cincy metro side, a lot of years in Northern Kentucky, but also a lot here in Cincinnati. However, I have been to Dayton quite a few times over the years. I say the general culture and the layout of the two cities, Dayton and Cincinnati, are pretty similar. But there are some key differences, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video, all right? We're going to cover some key areas that most of you look at when you're considering relocating to another city or another area. And that's usually the cost of living, the job market, crime and safety, schools, and fun, or things to do. So let's examine each one of them and we'll do a comparison to see how big the differences are and which one you might think is better if you're debating on one of the two areas. Okay, we'll start with Dayton. Dayton, Ohio is located in Montgomery County, Ohio, which is two counties northeast of Cincinnati. It is the sixth largest city in the state of Ohio with a city population of about 138,000 people. The greater Dayton area or the metro area totals the population to about 814,000 residents. These are gonna be the areas outside of the city portion like Beaver Creek, Centerville, Springboro, Kettering, Fairborn, areas outside of the city limits that help make up that metro population. Now Dayton does have an airport of its own, Dayton International Airport, which is a big plus for travelers in the area. And I do feel like that's one of the things that really solidifies Dayton as a major city or a small major city. They usually only put international airports in important economic areas. So Dayton folks, just know you're important. I'm a... I'm not like most people. I actually feel like the Dayton airport is a lot cooler than our airport here in Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. I don't know, it just has a really nice look to it. It's not cramped up. I think Dayton might have the edge on airports. That's just my opinion. It's a pretty densely suburban area, especially in the inner city parts. Gonna be pretty close to your neighbors in the inner city until you start getting to the suburbs on the outskirts. Cost of living. What is it costing these people to live in Dayton? The median home value in Dayton is gonna be about $70,000, which is a small fraction of the national average of $230,000. Right now, as I'm making this video, there are over 100 listings in Dayton that are under 100,000, and many of them are move-in ready homes, meaning they are not fixer-uppers. You can move right in and enjoy your life. Nothing really to fix. That is drastically different than what's going on here in Cincinnati, just to kind of throw that out there. If you find a house for $50,000 in Cincinnati right now, the odds are that it's not move-in ready, even in the worst areas. I'm talking full gut remodeling, down to the studs kind of thing. You're not getting moving ready stuff at 50,000, 60,000 in Cincinnati. Just keep that in mind as we move forward with this video. The most expensive home on the market in the city limits of Dayton right now is around 1.5 million. This is an 8,200 square foot home with five beds, nine baths and a gated community. Cause you don't see that a lot in Cincinnati either. You don't see gated communities in the city limits too much. Usually the gated communities are on the outskirts in the suburbs. Now, if you're getting into one of the popular suburbs, the average home price will increase. Take for example, Beaver Creek, which is a suburb of Dayton, about eight miles outside the city limits, where the average home price increases to about $214,000, much closer to the national average. The cheapest home on the market in Beaver Creek right now is right around 160,000. That's a two bed, one bath, one level house. The most expensive home in Beaver Creek right now is listed at $775,000. And that is a six bed, five bathroom, and over 7,600 square feet. 
So I feel like that is common for most major cities. It's usually cheaper around the inner city. Then when you get to the more desirable areas on the suburbs, the price gradually increases. As far as the rental prices, the median rental price is about $724. So for a two bedroom apartment, probably the 700 to 900 range. Oh, and here's an interesting fact. Nisha is telling us that almost half of the residents in the city portion of Dayton are owners and not renters. So that's kind of encouraging. I've seen numbers a lot lower than that in some cities. And according to payscale.com, the grocery cost is about 3% less than the national average right now. What about the gas cost in Dayton? Well, here's Dayton right here in Montgomery County, right around 350 a gallon at the moment, which is lower than the national average as well. So I don't know, it's seeming like it's kind of cheap to live in Dayton so far. What are you thinking? Let's keep moving. The job market in Dayton, what's that looking like? What does it work like? Looks like the median household income in Dayton is about $35,000, which is about half of the national average of 65,000. They have the job market at a C plus on niche.com. Wright Patterson Air Force Base is listed as the largest employer in Dayton with about 28,000 employees, followed closely by some major healthcare providers like Premier Health Partners and Kettering. So aerospace and defense, healthcare, education, these are gonna be some of the top industries to work in in Dayton. So they have a pretty decent job market, definitely not the best, but it is ranked above average on a lot of different sources. Okay, crime and safety. How safe or how dangerous is Dayton, Ohio? According to citydata.com, the crime rate is considerably higher than it is in the surrounding metro areas. You can see if you compare Dayton to its neighboring suburbs like Moraine, Kettering, Huber Heights, Beaver Creek, the crime rate is much higher than those places. The averages on violent crimes are much higher than the state average also. So that is something to consider for sure. They are saying that the violent crime rate is 97% higher than the national average. So crime is one of the most popular things people consider when they're moving to a new area. But you gotta be realistic too. They're gonna throw this data out here, but there's really nowhere in America that you can go and there will be no crime at all. It ain't safe, it ain't safe, it ain't safe, it ain't safe best you can do is just take the data and try to make the most balanced decision for you and your situation. If you can afford to get further away from the inner city, you'll probably end up in an area with much less crime. All right, moving on to schools. Got to get the education, right? Or do we? On the education spectrum, Niche has them at a C minus, which is a little below average. They have the average graduation rate at about 70% and about 24% of the students who graduate go on to college. Pretty average across the board if you look at everything from elementary on up to high school. They do have a major university, the University of Dayton up there, which is a private Catholic school. That is a pretty exceptional college. But the data is showing that the public school system in Dayton is a little bit under average. Now, what about things to do in Dayton? What kind of fun stuff they got going on? So like I mentioned, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base is up there, so it's a pretty big aviation town. The U.S. Air Force Museum is a big attraction up there. You can check out some historical aircrafts and artifacts. Lots of historical places like museums and history parks and theaters. There's a Riverscape Metro Park downtown, popular place to take the kids and family or just go for a walk. Also looks like they got a lot of highly rated places to eat that are also in the downtown and midtown areas a lot of local joints you know those small business restaurants and those kind of places are really good things to have they really help keep a town thriving they keep that money flowing within the city dayton also has a minor league baseball team the dayton dragons if of course you're into baseball they have their own stadium up on north patterson boulevard also the dayton flyers college basketball team has been a big ncaa competitor for as long as i can remember so Dayton has some things to do for as small as the city is. It's got some things going on for it. You're definitely going to get that small city vibe in Dayton, but economically they are positioned in a pretty good place. All right, how does that stack up to Cincinnati? I've talked so much about Cincinnati on my channel. I'm not going to get too much into the basic details about Cincy. You can check out my channel and find out pretty much anything you need to know about Cincinnati. I also put some videos in the description about Cincinnati that are very helpful if you're curious on the specifics about Cincy. But the comparison. Cincinnati, the population of the general Cincy area is a little over 300K. That's more than double that of the population of Dayton. The average home price in Cincinnati is about 200,000, more than three times the home value price 
in Dayton. And yes, as you might guess, when you get to the suburbs outside the city limits, the housing costs do go up even more. For example, a very popular suburb of Cincinnati is Liberty Township. The cheapest house on the market in Liberty right now is $235,000. That's a three bed, two bath home, and it's only a thousand square feet. The most expensive home on the market in Liberty right now is $640,000. And that one is five beds, five baths, 3,300 square feet. A two bedroom apartment in Cincinnati, 900 to 1,200 a month. Food costs and dining costs are probably gonna be slightly higher than Dayton, but not like break the bank higher. Probably not even a noticeable difference. Gas prices right now in Cincinnati, the national average is 390. And you can see Cincinnati, which is in Hamilton County down here, is right at the national average. And if we go back up here to Dayton and Montgomery County, you can see a little cheaper in Dayton for sure. So they are definitely saving on gas up in Dayton compared to Cincinnati. All right, the job market in Cincinnati. Well, like Dayton, healthcare and education are big industries in Cincinnati. The University of Cincinnati is a big employer. So are the bigger hospitals like Children's and UC Medical. Cincinnati has always been in the rankings for the best cities for young professionals. The median income is gonna be around 46,000. I think the biggest difference in the job market would be just the massive difference in population of the two metro areas. Remember, when you total Dayton's metro area, you're getting about 800,000 residents. When you total the Cincinnati Cincinnati metro area, you're getting about 2.2 million residents. That's almost three times the size of Dayton's metro area. Cincinnati borders Northern Kentucky and the three northernmost counties in Kentucky and also Southeast Indiana. So a lot of people coming from all over different states means a lot of money circulating in and out of the area. So mathematically, that just means it's gonna be a, a bigger and stronger economy. So it's gonna put Cincinnati higher on that job market scale because of the more abundance of job opportunities. All right, what about inner city crime in Cincinnati? Niche.com has it at a C minus for safety, pretty similar to Dayton on all cylinders. A much higher crime compared to the suburbs, very similar on the amount of violent crimes as well, about 96% higher than the national average on violent crimes. As far as the schools on niche.com, they have it at a B. Cincinnati honestly has some outstanding schools even in the rougher areas, you can get your kids into a pretty decent school. A little high on the proficiency and the graduation rate as well. Also a significantly larger amount of high school graduates are moving on to go to college. Things to do in Cincinnati compared to Dayton. Cincinnati is such a vibrant place. I mean, it seems like it just keeps growing and growing as time goes on. They just keep putting money into it and putting more and more efforts into keeping Cincinnati a thriving and attractive place. I mean, you got the banks by the river that was just revived in recent years. So it was a big chunk of Vine Street and OTR. There's museums, indoor theme parks, water parks, Newport Aquarium over in Northern Kentucky, the Cincinnati Zoo, super robust restaurant scene with a lot of culture as well. Whatever food you're into, you can probably find it somewhere in Cincy. And I don't even have time to get into the stuff to do once you get outside of Cincy into the suburbs. I can go on forever. You got Kings Island, Coney Island, Riverbend, et cetera, et cetera. Who is winning in these categories? Cost of living, that one goes to Dayton. I mean, it's just overall cheaper. Job market, Cincinnati. Bigger metro area, more jobs, and stronger market just means more money. Crime and safety. That one was close, but it's gonna be a tie. Both Cincinnati and Dayton are pretty much even on those crime statistics. Schools, that one's gonna to go to Cincinnati. Higher graduation rates, higher proficiencies, they're gonna win in that category. Things to do, I'm gonna give that one to Cincinnati also. I mean, I think on the variety side, Cincinnati just has a bigger catalog of things to choose from, especially when you're starting to add in those metro areas. So like I said, I do think Dayton's a really cool place personally. I've even helped some people in Dayton before. So reach out to me if you need some help up there in one of the Dayton suburbs, or if you need help selling or buying something here in Cincinnati or the Cincinnati suburbs, I'm sure I can help you too. Don't hesitate. I love hearing from you guys. Love helping you meet your home buying and home selling goals. If you appreciated the content, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos when I put them out. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know how you feel. Which one you think is better, Cincinnati or Dayton? I really appreciate you watching. And remember, when it comes to houses in Cincinnati, you can always call Vic.